Welcome to the Miseducation of the People, episode three of season two, MOTP 203, Synthesizer. In this episode, we are talking about the metaverse and NFTs. Beats by Pete Samples. Miseducation. Yo, what's good, what's good? Welcome to another episode of the Miseducation of the People podcast. Before we get started, you know, we got to tell you who I am, you know. It's the Baldy God with this perfectly supreme gleam, not me. Top two Baldies and I'm not number two. Certified Baldy boy, Drake stole that from me, all right, you know. Smoothest Baldy on both sides in the Mason-Dixon line, both sides right there, you know. Baldy so smooth, they can't believe it's not butter. That thing smooth right there, you know. Your favorite fly ball head professor, Tam Morgan II. Welcome to the Miseducation of the People, episode three of season two, MOTP 203, Synthesizer. New Miseducation. In this episode, we are talking about the metaverse and NFTs. But before we get started, again, you know, we always got to do the shout outs because we all are out here, you know, we are living life. And we just trying to make it. So shout out to all of my car owners. It's real out here with these gas prices. The pain is real, real. So real that I'm about to audition to be old boy's hype man. Gas prices way too high. Vladimir Putin needs to die. Gas prices way too high. Vladimir needs to die. I'm the truth and the boo. Shout out to my Reese's Peanut Butter Cup gang. Gang, gang. You know, I'm a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup kind of sore, and we do not rock with the pieces over here. Don't don't give me that. That's a slap in the face, all right? And my real, 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 real Reese's Gang members know that the Christmas trees and the Easter eggs are the real one because, you know, it's superior. You don't have to worry about the wraps. You can get straight to work out here for real. And shout out to just my people in general, living their best life, not caring what anyone thinks about them while they positively pour into this world, just like the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tony Doc. Ain't nobody fresh as me. I'm so very fresh as so fresh and so clean, clean. Ain't nobody fresh as me. I'm very fresh and so fresh and so clean, clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. Y'all better stop playing with that man. But today's episode is called Synthesizer. And it is inspired by the song by Outkast, which is one of my favorite groups, and featuring George Clinton. And in this song, it is talking about how the uh, technological evolution and advancements are causing a lot of negative impacts to our society. And as we're seeing today, you know, we're all constantly scrolling on phones. Uh, We're addicted to different screens and it's just technology is easily accessible, you know, Um, just thinking about tournament Terminator and all that stuff, you know, with the machines coming and taking over the whole world, you know. It's, you know, like it's, it's, it's concerning to me, you know, but I think that as we educate ourselves and inform ourselves that we can really. Uh, make sure that we're using technology to our best uh, advantages and not falling down the rabbit hole of negativity that it can bring, you know. And one of those things that are very is big right now is the metaverse. You know, a lot of people are talking about it and, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, you know. So today, you know, I figure why not talk about it? You know, I'm in tech and I enjoy it. Um, so why not? We here. And it also ties into gaming. You know, if you haven't seen last episode, uh, Life is Like a Dice Game, MOTP202 featuring Jihan J. Make sure you go back and check that out. But the metaverse, what everybody is asking, what they're wondering about. The metaverse is where the real life and digital realm meet. It is a digital space where you can duplicate real life or create your wildest imagination. Uh, When I think about the metaverse, um, I instantly think about the movie Ready Player One. Um, Within there, um, people were able to create a totally different lifestyle um, and they were able to recreate who they are as a person. But remember, with the metaverse, you know, you can never, 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 never be more drippy than the OG, triple OG, Mr. Tony Doc. Mr. Tony Doc, I want to sing the drip song to you. No matter what I do, 
I keep dripping on you. No matter if I put on my damn shoes, I keep dripping on you. No matter what I do, I keep dripping on you. No matter what day it might be to, I keep dripping on you. Y'all better stop playing with that man, for real, for real. The drip, don't come around him because you might slip. Anyway, you know, the pandemic has thrown a wrench in a lot of our plans. Um, a lot of in-person events, concerts, conventions, seeing family, etc. Um, has stopped because of the fact that, you know, with everything going on with COVID, um, it's not really safe out here for people. And especially uh, individuals who are uh, immuno immunocompromised. Y'all know I can never talk, but it's all good. Um, or people just in general who just do not want to get sick. So... Uh, the metaverse is a great solution for that, of bringing people of distances together in a virtual space. So the metaverse takes place um, pretty much, you know, virtual reality, or if you don't have the virtual reality headset, uh, you're able to navigate it within a 2D um, space. When I think about the metaverse, it has a lot of real life implications. So there's, you're taking action in the digital and then it has real life implications, like I just said. So the money that uh, you're spending in real life gets you different options within the digital space. So take, for instance, concerts, right? So Fortnite has been doing different concerts um, throughout the past like year and a half or so. Um, and, uh, one of the more recent ones was Ariana Grande. So think about, right. So you're attending a concert within the metaverse, right? Think about it as if you buy a, uh, skin customization for your character that's related to the person. So say for instance, Ari Ariana Grande, since we're talking about it, right? So if you buy that skin within the digital space, you may get a coupon in real life that can give you a discount on some of her uh, branded merchandise items, you know? So that's one thing way of that. Uh, the digital interaction has that uh, real life consequence or uh, results, whatnot. Right. Another example um, with universities, um, oftentimes they have open houses where students are able to attend the school to see what the campus is like, what the culture is like, et cetera. However, with a uh, pandemic, uh, a lot of universities have stopped these in-person tours or visits. So you have to really think outside the box to see how are you going to recruit new students? How are students going to be able to see if the campus culture is their fit? Here comes the metaverse that provides that solution to the problem, right? So uh, I actually had the pleasure of attending a virtual co college fair and with that, uh, you would navigate the space within with a uh, avatar that you're able to customize. Um, with this, you can do various activities. So it can be dancing, um, having mocktails, fishing, talking to other people. Um, so, you know, you come into a certain area and there's a space where you can actually talk verbally or through text. Um, well, with the college fair, they actually had different booths within the uh, metaverse space at the booth they actually had a real life person a college administrator who was there to help out with admissions questions so you would walk up to the general area of where the booth is and then you will see information about the school uh a link to apply and then also you were able to have a real life conversation with a uh professional that can answer any questions that you may have about the respective institution so that's another instance of the metaverse at use, right? So also just thinking outside the box now, I think that the metaverse is great for when you're not able to see loved ones uh, during the COVID or even afterwards, because, you know, travel is expensive. We see with the gas prices going up. Joe, I didn't eat today, Joe. You know why, <laughs> Joe, you want to know why? The gas, Joe. I got a car. I got a car, Joe. Look at me, Joe. Joe, my feet is on land. My feet is on land. I can run into a op. I can run into a landmine. This is it's all on you, Joe. I hope you're paying for my funeral, Joe. 
Now I got to walk these streets because the gas price is too high. And, you know, it's real. Like I said earlier. So I personally haven't tried it yet, but I think the metaverse is great for long distance relationships, you know? Um, imagine, you know, you're missing Bay. It's one of them nights you're feeling lonely and whatnot. Valentine's Day and all that good stuff. And then you think, ding, oh yeah, we got the metaverse. So you got go ahead and hop on it real quick and you serenade your bay just like little man. Can I sing to you? Yeah. You're the smile. Yeah, I could do this while I was sitting and talking to you for hours. I want to give you your flowers. Got some champagne showers. I was just enough to tell He was having no notes. He was nice. No, don't, 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 don't front my man's eye, right, you know. But that's some of the upsides to the metaverse. You know, it provides real life solutions to our problems, you know with using technology to our advantage. Um, now, there always is a downside when it comes to uh, technology. You know, um, you have your social skills. You're not necessarily able to hone it as you would in person. A lot of people feel comfortable talking about things online in the digital space, not realizing that the actions they take there have consequences. You know, just like we we're talking about money being spent in the digital space, the same thing, you know, you say something negative or take some negative action online, that can really come back and you may be fired from your job, disciplinary actions, et cetera, you know? And for me, my, my biggest fear would be that people become delusional thinking that this digital space is actually real, you know? We see it now often with Facebook, with Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you know, a lot of people are using these platforms to reach people that they normally wouldn't have access to, but, you know, they're talking all types of crazy to them, you know, and that presents a whole diff different um, bunch of issues, you know, mental health issues. You have some people who are actually taking it seriously and causing violence against others. So these are some of the dangers of the metaverse, but, you know, we're going to really get into it the metaverse, the ups and downs, the little knickknacks and patty wax and give it all the bones and all that stuff. You know, later on, we talk to the guests. But now it's time for the progress report. All right. All right. So here's what's going on over here at the Real Talk Session series. So merch is still on hold. However, we, we, we working on some stuff, you know, just in time. The weather's warming up. It's getting nice out here, you know. Hoodies was nice, but, you know, it's time to switch it up a little bit. We got something. So, you know, the classics that were there before, we're not really going to have that. We reworking our strategy and all that good stuff. So make sure, you know, you follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, at Real Talk Session Series. We're not on Twitter, but you can follow my personal at Real underscore MR underscore Morgan. And, you know, talk to me, you know, tell me who you want to see on the podcast, what questions you may have, anything, you know, let me know how I'm doing. You know, you can say, you know, how fly you are, how, how your beard flourish. I ain't gonna lie though. The beard been flourishing re recently. I, ain't, you know, like I understand too. Also with women, how y'all be talking about, oh yeah, the shrinkage. I got some hang time, but you know, the, if you hating though, you know, like if you hating, but anyway, you know, I digress. Um, also, we're introducing a new segment called Office Hours, where you can send me your questions and I'll answer them live on the show. Make sure you send your questions to info at realtalksessionseries.org. And you never know, your question may be answered live on air. You know, we're going to make it happen. And I'm going to be honest, too. So don't be out here sending me some crazy stuff thinking I'm going um, to you know, agree with you. Nah, I'm going to keep it real with you. It's called Real Talk. I got you. But um, also, you know, we working over here. We working on the low, on the high, in the middle, everywhere, you know. We have a brand new series that we are producing, an educational interview series called She Got Game, A Celebration of Women in Gaming. And with this, we are highlighting various women within the gaming industry and the different things that they have going on. So whether it's content creation and marketing, uh, race and sexism within the gaming space, uh, building a brand. So we have a great lineup available, and this is in partnership with Morgan State University Esports Program, 300 Entertainment, DTLR, and Community. 
The replay will be available via our YouTube as an extra credit episode. And also the audio will be available on available podcast platforms. And shout out to all the YouTube viewers. Y'all are doing the thing thing for real. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're watching that video right now, just hit it, hit it real quick. This is like boom, boom, one, two. You know what I mean, not, not even like a second long. It's, it's easy. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. You know, throw some th- uh, questions in there. I'll answer that too. You know, put the questions there. Boom, I got you. Um, subscribe if you haven't done it so already. You know, we're trying to make it happen. We're trying to make a positive impact on this world. We are providing free knowledge and we want to see our people thrive, especially with these topics that we are talking about. So please make sure you're sharing it. Um, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, thank you. All my podcast people out there, you know, podcast platforms, make sure you leave a five-star review. You know, we don't want for just fives only, you know, real quick, real simple. Um, and that way, you know, engaging with us, it allows for the algorithms to put the show out in front of other people, you know, to have us to be exposed to new listeners. And that's really what we want. You know, we're growing over here. We have some other great ideas. We have some other things going on, but you know, we need additional support really to push forward and to implement it, you know, support matters. And it's, we're not asking you to spend money. We're just asking, you know, hit a like, subscribe, five star, all that good stuff, you know? And, you know, if you want to see the video or the audio, look in the show notes section of whether you're on YouTube or podcast, it's right there. You know, boom, we got you. You want to listen on the go? Boom. You back home chilling? Boom. We got YouTube. We, we, you know, we for the people. Real talk for the people, you know? All right. So today's guests are Mr. Robin and Shay Coke, the Future Wise Group. Um, these two individuals have been a blessing to me. Um, when we talking about, you know, the past two episodes of individuals who helped me when I was just starting out, when I was at my lowest point and getting back on my feet, they just, you know, they've helped me out tremendously to really establish my foundation when it comes to business. And they have a ton of knowledge. Uh, they are futurists, you know, so it's on par, you know, with the pandemic. I actually interviewed them on one of our other Real Talk Session series shows called The Real Talk Session. Session series, the revolution will be digitized. Hi, Hi we're, we're the Coke, Coke family. family. I'm, I'm Chase, Chase, and I'm nine years old. I'm and I'm Sage, and I'm seven years old. What are you guys doing here? Hi, I'm Shay Richbert Coke. I am the CEO of FamilyCon and co-founder of FutureWise Group. Hi, I'm Rolvin Koch. I'm the founder and CEO of FutureWise Group and the executive producer of Surviving the Future of Work podcast. And, and we're, we're coming to a, a real, real talk, talk session, session soon. soon. I feel Absolutely. like there are behind the scene discussions that only certain people in America know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then there are other people who find out when it's too late. We're the most educated generation in history. Yes. Yet this generation, but yet we don't have, you know, we're, we're locked out of a job. We've been displaced by, you know, uh, the Great Recession. Mm-hmm. A lot of us are not buying homes, and we thought we did everything that was right. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. So, like I said earlier, you know, we're talking about metaverse, we're talking about NFTs, and there's a lot of great information within there. So, let's see what's going on. And speaking of technology, there was a little technical difficulties, you know, technology going tech at the worst time. So, there is a slight echo on my uh, audio, so hopefully it's not anything that's going to deter you from watching this episode. However, Rolvin and Shay's audio is crystal clear, no echo. So, you know, that's the important chunk of information anyway. So let's go. Hey, hey what's, what's going, going on, on Rolvin and, and Shay? How y'all doing, How y'all doing today? today? Thank, Thank you for, for joining, joining me for the Miseducation of the people. people. Hey, Taryn, how's it going, man? Yeah. Happy to be here. Yes, yes. yes. Thank, Thank y'all, y'all so, so much, much again. again. Um, um, if y'all, if y'all haven't already, already seen, seen uh, the, the Real Talk Session series, series go, go back, back and, and we actually had Robin, Robin and Shay on there previously, previously. Also, also available on YouTube, YouTube so all my YouTube heads, heads go, back go back in the videos, videos you, know, you know, we got, we got some videos, videos. we got a catalog, catalog now, so, so but you got to go back there more now. You know, we get there, we get there, you know. But, uh, so... I'm glad, I'm glad to have, to have you all back, back because, because your group, group Future Wise Group, group um, is, is very on par with everything with the pandemic. pandemic. You know, you we, know we, we had to evolve, evolve and grow from what we're doing traditionally. So, can you, can you please, please break, break down, down what the Future Wise group, group is and, and what, what you, you both, both do? do? Absolutely. Thank you for t- Taryn for having us on. And like you said, you know, it's it's been a little while. 
uh, since we've been on and, you know, we've seen what has happened. So future wise over the last two years, you know, what we shifted our focus a little bit to focus more on the metaverse. So currently mm -hmm. we are a metaverse capability building organization. We work with educational institutions, organizations, as well as building brand strategies for celebrities, influencers, thought leaders, mm -hmm. anyone looking to enter into the metaverse. You know, and again, that's a part of our future wise, right? How do you make sure that you're future proof and you have a strategy to enter into any future endeavor or technology that comes around? And, and you know, that's what we do. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, 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 appreciate it. it. So, so I'm, I'm very, very big on educating, educating the people, people and doing, doing a lot, lot of uh, intelligence, intelligence breakdown, breakdown for, for everyone. everyone. And, and you both, both developed, developed uh, the, the intelligence formula, formula called, called Medic vs. IQ. IQ. So, so can you can break, you break that, that down, down to everyone to, to, so they can so have, they a, have better a better understanding of what it means? Because, because again, again Metaverse, Metaverse is very new, new so, so we want to make sure that, that we're breaking, breaking it down, down in a way that, that anyone, anyone can, can understand, understand this. this. Absolutely, Karen. Uh, great question. So the MIQ, which stands for the Metaverse Intelligence Quotient, is really a behavioral model. And this is a new model that us humans are going to have to use when we interact with one another, one another, excuse me, in the metaverse. So as we go through our day to day lives, currently, we talk about emotional intelligence, we talk about cultural intelligence. So the MIQ, the metaverse intelligence really ropes again, some of those intelligence and we have new factors involved too. But really, this is more than just a behavioral model. It's really the new um, emotional mindset that people need when we're in the metaverse. So while we have this MIQ in our forefront, we'll be able to create positive, memorable experiences while in the metaverse versus having negative experiences with one another. So we're really going to have to learn how to get along and reframe how we think and work within the metaverse to really create wonderful moments in there with different people that's it yeah and that's, and that's definitely, definitely clutch, clutch and, and crucial, crucial because, because in the in metaverse, metaverse you're literally able, able to create any particular scene, scene scenario etc et so, so for, for me, me i'm like, like i have my apprehensions i always, I always think, think about ready, ready player, player one with this, with this. Um, and, um, I've and I've also heard of reports of, of slavery being, being within the metaverse. The metaverse. So, so this, this is, is something crucial, and I'm glad that uh, this is actually being put it out here, here definitely. definitely. Um, so, so what, what are, are some steps, steps on how, how people, people can, can improve their, their metaverse, metaverse IQ? Okay, um, so Rowan and I have taken various steps in really promoting this MIQ. Um, first thing, we work with builders so we have a lot of people building different communities within the metaverse, right? So a community could be someplace where you go for a conference, Taryn, or it could be a community where you go for just concerts, right? Different concerts. So we're working with these community builders to really implement the MIQ within these community guidelines. So once people are in these areas, we want people to understand there are safety guidelines, there are mental, you know, cognitive safety guidelines for one another to get along and really have a wonderful time to learn from one another while we're here. Other than that, we work with corporations because as we all know, believe it or not, in the near future, we're going to be having corporate meetings in the metaverse, believe it or not. We're going to have our goggles on meeting one another in our homes in the metaverse. So we're working with corporations on setting these guidelines on maybe how coworkers respond to one another in meetings you know, how we move about in there, the things we say all in the metaverse. And lastly, we actually are working with schools because we really have to implement this with children. It's so important that children understand this MIQ because as they interact in there, this is going to make or break or decide their experiences while they're in the metaverse, Taryn. And if there are individuals who are interested in learning more about this MIQ, please look out for courses that Robin and I are currently creating so people can learn about this uh, emotional intelligence or this emotional mind frame and mindset that people need to really thrive and do well in the metaverse. So again, an individual really look out for this course. It's quite unique. And this is the way to go to really thrive in the metaverse with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and usually, and like, usually with like with the, the internet, internet and, and especially, especially with, with social, social media, media right, right now, now a lot, a lot of, people of people take it, it as, as it's something, something that it's, it's not, not real, real at all. You know, you know they don't they realize, realize that, that your internet, internet uh, actions, actions have real life, life implications. implications. So, so definitely, definitely the, the training, training that you, that you are, are providing is 
crucial because a lot of people just don't have that 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 I guess like the ability to understand that really. So you know, putting that information is crucial. So when you're talking about building spaces, I've had the pleasure of being within the metaverse and. Getting, getting to explore, explore doing, doing like different, like different uh, conferences, conferences, whether, whether it's, it's like career like fairs, fairs or even uh, uh, university fairs. fairs. And, and that, that was, pretty was pretty cool. cool. I've, I've never, never done, done that before. before. I was able to build, build my own avatar, avatar which is pretty, pretty dope. dope. Um, so, um, so when you're when talking, talking about, about properties, properties right? right? One, one thing that I've been hearing about is real estate within the metaverse. So can you break down exactly what that is? Because I'm like... I'm confused, I'm confused, and I'm, I'm sure, sure the people, people are, are too. too. I'm like, like real estate, I always, always uh, think, think about real life, life something, something tangible, something, something I can touch, a door that I can open. open. So, so can you can please break, break down, down what real estate, real estate looks, looks like within the metaverse? The metaverse. Now, that's a great question, Taryn. A lot of people are looking at real estate in the metaverse and trying to figure it out as well. But you also see the headlines every day about large companies that are rushing into the metaverse to purchase a space. So let's think about it like that. The metaverse are, are different worlds and virtual reality spaces uh, where eventually they want humans to go into the space to interact and engage, right? They want to move away from just seeing each other on the internet or looking through the mobile phone. They want us to actually, not physically, but virtually be in those spaces, right? So now who owns, like, what are we going to do when we get there, right? So we need to have things to do. And so in order for that to happen, they need to build. They need to start to build buildings, everything that we can do in the real world and probably even beyond, they want us to be able to do inside of the metaverse. So companies, for instance, like a, a Sony may decide that they want to build a digital twin of their headquarters, meaning they build the exact building that they have in the real world of their headquarters in the metaverse. Right now, people work from home. They're talking about engagement is low. You know, how do we, Zoom fatigue, but how do we have a more realistic experience if we can't go into work because of pandemic or some type of new, you know, variant pops up, right? And so you, you've experienced what it feels like to be inside of that virtual reality. It feels like someone's right next to you talking, right? Yeah, yeah. scary. scary. And there's up, it, it does. It, it, you know, there's different add-ons where you can actually feel uh, or mm. someone touching you. There's things that, aside from the goggles that you can put on. So that's what they want. So in order for, for that to happen, companies are starting to build places, buildings inside of the metaverse, uh, mm. inside of places like the Central Land or the Sandbox. You've probably seen Snoop Dogg, a lot of talk around Snoop building his uh, Snoop Land inside of the metaverse or Nike Land inside of Roblox, right? And so people can go in there, interact, or be inside of a concert experience, and we can party in there. People can come from all over the globe. So this is actually happening. And one thing that people need to understand as you start to look at the different places where you can do that, like I said, there's Decentraland, there's Sandbox, there's a place called Superworld, where they're actually looking at the entire globe and taking physical locations that are on the global map and saying, hey, you can purchase that land. If you wanted to own the Eiffel Tower, Tower, Tower plot in France, in Paris, you can purchase that. And eventually, when people start to build around that, you know, uh, the value of your digital real estate goes up. So that's, that's just the future of real estate. Agents are starting to move inside of there. We still have investors that are you know, because the prices are pretty low, mm -hmm. or they were lower like a year ago, that they're owning pieces of land and hoping that a large company comes next to them so they can then sell that land to someone else. So I think the highest I've seen, maybe almost uh, $100 million that people are investing because they know wow. this is happening. There's no turning back. People are like, oh, this is another fact. The metaverse mm -hmm. is happening. Real estate is, is, is evolving, and this is the future of real estate. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way, the way I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about, about it, it, right, with Super Bowl, Super Bowl how, how everyone, everyone wants, wants to get, to get on, on their, uh, their, their, their their commercials and whatnot. whatnot. So, so is it, is kind, it kind of like, like the same, the same concept? concept? So say, so for, say instance, for instance, if uh, Google, Google owned a real estate, estate spot, spot, is it people, people actually, actually buying uh, real, estate real estate within, within the Google-owned Google -owned space? space? Or, or is, is it just, I guess, something where it's just open world and there's no separate little bubbles or whatnot? So... Uh, it's a great question, right? Because it is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. So now we have, I, I mentioned a few different worlds, right? So there's an opportunity for people to go in there and build their own world, right? The entire thing together is going to be called the metaverse. But Taren can go in there and build his own Taren world, right? And then you can split your world up into different segments and sell your space. So it's not necessarily that a Google will own it. Google might have the headquarters. Maybe they decide to put it in a world called the Central Land 
or they may decide to put it in super world. These are all different metaverse spaces, but together, um, you know, the division is to make sure that they're connected. So you can hop mm-hmm. from one world to the next and eventually have your avatar that you, you know, right now when you go into a place, into a metaverse space, you create your avatar. Yeah, the future yeah. is you have your avatar and you can take it into different worlds with you that you can build outside. Taryn looks like Taryn or whatever you want to look like. And you can hop from Facebook Horizon or to the Central Land or to mm-hmm. Super World and you look the same. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, so it, definitely it definitely makes sense, sense now that you broke it down. It kind of reminds me of... Uh, uh, Animal, Animal Crossing, Crossing, where if you, you invite, invite, extend, extend an invitation, invitation, you're able, able to go to someone's, someone's island, island, but it's, it's all, all connected. connected. So, so I, I, got I got you. Thank you for breaking, for breaking it, down. it down. And, and definitely, definitely, I think, I think about, about the capabilities, the capabilities of, haunted of haunted houses. houses. I, would I would never, would never go, go in there, there because, because like, like those, those be, be the, the, it, it's, it's scary. I ain't gonna lie. Like they're not able to touch you in real life, but there it's like unlimited. So that's definitely something I'm excited to see. The the possibilities, the possibilities that, that are being, being uh, built, built within, within the space, space that will come, come definitely. definitely. So, so uh, let's, uh, touch, let's on touch on something, something that, that you actually touched, touched on earlier, on earlier uh, which, uh, which is the metaverse and, and children, children being, being on it. it. What, what are, are some, some of the ups, ups and, downs and downs of children, children being within, within the metaverse? Ah, uh, I love this question, Taryn, um, because the kids are our future. Uh, before I go forward. One thing I want to share with all your listeners is we currently deal with so much stress in this world. We deal with divisions and we are now creating a virtual world and we want to try our best to get everything right Mm -hmm. the first time. We don't want to bring all this negativity into a world we don't have to bring in there. But children are currently in the metaverse. Um, And some of the pros of kids being in the metaverse, I'll list some of those. Um, Kids are having extreme amount of fun playing with one another. I'm sure you all have all heard of Roblox. You know, um, it's a community where kids from all over can play and have a tremendously exciting time playing. Kids Mm -hmm. are learning now in the metaverse, which is really cool. So your classmate, Taryn, can be in India, can be in Brazil and in South Africa, and you guys are all learning together. So that's remarkable. And then you have different cultures who are popping up and they're creating spaces in the metaverse. So for example, um, there's an exhibit coming out about the rainforest in Brazil. So Mm -hmm. kids can virtually go there and learn about the rainforest and learn how to preserve it and everything that encompassed the rainforest. And you have kids learning um, quite unique activities right now, Taryn. Mm -hmm. So I know kids are learning how to farm in the metaverse. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things they're learning how to do virtually that they may not be able to do physically. So those are the positive components of the metaverse for kids. Now, if you look on the flip side, there are a lot of cons and these cons can get really ugly really fast. So. Uh, first, I want to talk about the cyberbullying kids are experiencing. Uh, kids are using profanity uh, tremendously. Um, for example, the N word is being used um, just with no regard. I, you know, I've seen amongst kids in the metaverse, um, and this all goes back to the MIQ and how this can stop some of these things from happening. Kids are actually able to then go in adult only spaces. Um, there's been uh, reports and articles out in Roblox, for example, that kids were able to easily walk into a strip club, which was part of Roblox, literally. Adults only. It's very easy access for kids. Kids are using their parents' uh, money, like credit cards, whatever uh, cards are connected to accounts, mm-hmm. and really spending tremendous amounts of money, of their parents' money. And it's very easy. It's, it's at the access of a child. And so overall, I'm really painting the picture that kids will exhibit uh, negative mental health experiences in the metaverse if we do not get this right. And that's why Robin and I are so passionate about the MIQ and applying this, not just to kids, but particularly right now I'm talking about kids. Because when we apply this, most of these things I've just spoken about, they know how to navigate these situations and remove themselves from that and have only positive experiences with people in the metaverse. So the pros and cons are there, but if we work hard as Robin and I are trying to do and implement Mm -hmm. this new mindset, this new behavior in the metaverse, kids will have much less negative mental health experiences in there. So I hope, you know, that really clarified on what you were asking about those pros and cons. 
Yeah, it yeah, definitely, definitely did. did. And, and the, thank, you thank you for the work you were doing because, because you're setting, setting the foundation for the future when it comes to the safety of our, of our children within the metaverse. Within the metaverse. Um, um, it, it, the internet is a very wild, wild place. place. I look at it as the wild, wild west. west and, and we do we need those standards, standards in place to ensure that, that you know, know, there's, there's not, not a mental, mental uh, uh, negative, uh, negative effect when it comes to the mental health because we're seeing an increase in I'm seeing, I'm seeing it within, it within the, the, the college, college space. space. I'm hearing, hearing about reports within K through 12. It's, it's definitely, definitely insane, insane, but the, the upside of it, though, I like is the fact that, that you know, the, the, the farming, farming piece that you said, that you said. It's providing, it's providing training, training for, for these lost, lost arts, arts, you know, you know that, that our ancestors, ancestors used to do. do. You know, now, now you, know, you know we're, we're on, on digital, digital all day long, long so, so they're, they're able, able to get that experience. In some climates, you're not actually able, able to grow certain, certain things. So, so you know, it, it allows, allows for that. that. If you don't have anyone locally, you can connect, you can connect with other people further away that can help you. And one thing in particular that I really like is Assassin's Creed. They have, they have a museum, museum mode where, where you're able, able to see, see all, all the architecture, the, the, the historical uh, buildings, buildings and whatnot. And so, so students, students are able to go around, around and look to see, see, you know, especially if they're into architecture, architecture and whatnot. So, so that's, that's one of the one great things. things. So, so touching, touching on, on students, students spending, spending, I mean, kids spending their parents' money, right? So how do NFTs, blockchains, all that, how does that connect to the metaverse? Great question, and um, so, you know, we I want to talk about that for a second because the Roblox, Roblox or Robux, that's what they call them. It's a big issue. It is a big issue, but like now we're seeing, like you said, the NFTs that have exploded in 2021, um, and how's that connect to the metaverse? Like you said, NFTs, right now we see a lot of artwork, the artwork that's associated with NFTs and people are doing a lot of investing. But what is the NFT? I think a lot of people don't really know what it really is. And when we break the word down, it's a, a non-fungible token, right? Something that's fungible means it's something that's exchangeable for something else. Um, but something that's non-fungible is something that's unique, right? It's something that's unique and it can't be exchanged for something else. So and a token is something that represents another item, right? So NFTs are really just items that are unique that we're bringing into the metaverse uh, so that we can experience them in that digital world. Right, so when someone creates an art piece, a piece of art, right, um, and they they turn it into an NFT, the blockchain actually is the source, is the record, right? Is that is that general ledger? So we know who owns that particular NFT, who owns this item. Like right now, when you see a meme on the internet, people don't know who's the original creator of that. It just kind of flies around, right? But if you created a a, a meme for the metaverse. We would and attach it to the blockchain, we would know that Taryn owned that NFT. And then you could also associate a percentage of royalties to that NFT so that anybody that uses that particular NFT that's associated that you created and is listed on the blockchain so everyone knows that you can get paid. Anytime someone so let's say uh you know uh, Hollywood comes to you and say, Hey, that was a great uh NFT that you created or a piece of art, we want to use it in a in a movie. You can receive royalties from that. And that's how it's kind of connected to the metaverse. You know, so we're going to see a lot more things go into the metaverse. For instance, co concert tickets. You know, you, you go to Snoop's concert in the metaverse. They issue an NFT. Your ticket is unique, right, to you. You, you own that. Um, and so you need that. And it's also going to be attached to some uh, capabilities, things that you can do, right? So you get entitlement. So you'll be entitled to maybe a VIP section, right, with your token. It's a non-fungible token. So that, that's what people are doing. If you um, are creating a game, you're a developer, and people start to create uh, skins or uh, different type of avatars, you can create those, turn them into NFT. If you build, if you go in there and buy a plot of land in the central land, and you decide you want to build a movie theater in there or a bowling alley so people can play games, you can that that building that you create is an NFT. So that means you can rent that building out and say, hey, I own that building on that piece of land. And you want to come do events there, I can rent that space out to you and you can attach a fee to it. So that's mm -hmm. the future of NFTs and that's the value around NFTs. It's not just the artwork. It's everything that's inside of the metaverse. It needs to be attached to an owner um, and you can monetize more. So intellectual property uh, is the key to the NFTs. Yeah, and yeah, that's and one thing, thing like, like I really, I really wish, was wish was around back in the day because when you look at Basquiat, you know, he didn't get his flowers at the time of, but you know, 
you're looking at Picasso, Picasso you're, sell, you're, you're selling, selling everything, everything but they're, they're not, not getting, getting the credit, credit you, know, you know that's, that's often times the, the creator is never credited, credited when it comes to the financial, financial. But, but now that's changing the game for everyone you know who is creating some sort of um type of content and, and I'm really, I'm really excited, excited to see the development of it because, like you were saying with uh, the Snoop Dogg, Dogg thing, thing, the the, 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 the real, real life, life implication, implication of getting a VIP, VIP ticket, ticket in, in real life. life. So, so just seeing so how, that's how that's gonna, gonna grow, grow because, because now I see uh, even, even uh, clothing, clothing companies jumping, jumping into, into the, the NFT, NFT space. space. So, so I, I believe it was Gucci or one of those and. Um, just really just getting really advertising, advertising in there, and, and I wonder if they're going to do something with like discounted rates when you try to buy the actual physical product product in the store. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with that definitely. So. What, what are, are some, some ways, ways that, that the average, average person, person can, can get, get into, into the, the NFT, NFT space? Well, you know, getting into the NFT space, it could be a little complicated, right? So I tell people first to get a basic understanding, you know, by listening to podcasts uh, like yours and like ours in Metaverseology, just kind of understand the terminology right first. Take a look at some of the websites that are out there, like OpenSea, Rarible, to see, you know, how, how this whole process works. But if I had to walk you through a step and say, okay, you're ready to dive in, the first thing you're going to need to do is have uh, Ethereum, right? Some, some type of uh, cryptocurrency so that you can actually get started. And so you would need to start with like a, a Coinbase site. You probably have to spend at least $100, go to a Coinbase site and transfer money into Coinbase. Coinbase is, is a, you know, like a marketplace where you are able to purchase this, different cryptocurrencies. You know, so there are, there are a lot out there, but Ethereum and ETH is the most popular one for creating NFTs. So you want to take your, your dollar or whatever currency you have and convert it into Ethereum or cryptocurrency. Hmm. Then the second thing you need to do is attach that to some type of crypto wallet. One of the most popular ones is like a MetaMask, right? So you got to go to another site. Um, MetaMask has like a, a, like a plugin that you use on Google Chrome. So you could attach it, it's, it's ETH, but they give you a password and it's, a really long password. Here's the thing about security in the metaverse. It's going to be really, really difficult right now with this. So you definitely want a way to save these passwords. They automatically generate. So you attach that uh, Coinbase to like your to your MetaMask, right? So now you have a crypto wallet. MetaMask is a, is a crypto wallet. Just the same way we have a physical wallet, you need a wallet in the metaverse to be able to purchase and, and do things. Then you go to one of the sites. The third step is to now go to uh, a OpenSea or a Rarible, and that's the marketplace for NFTs, right? They're going to ask you to sync your wallet, your crypto wallet, so they can get the um, Ethereum or whatever cryptocurrency you need. They're going to ask you to sync that to their website. So as you can see, it sounds super complicated, mm -hmm. you know. But first, you need you need some type of cryptocurrency. You need a wallet for that cryptocurrency, and you need to sync that wallet to some site that lets you upload your your digital artwork. Or if you if you want to buy it, you know, so that they know that that password or that wallet that they give you is going to connect you to that blockchain, so they know who's the owner. So again, get familiarized with it, right? Don't just jump in. People think that it's a get rich quick scheme. Some people have made money. There are a lot of scams out there. Mm -hmm. Do your research. And another thing I want to add, you know, before you kind of get out there thinking I could just create any type of you know crypto punk or something ridiculous and upload it, and I'm going to make a ton of money. You know, a lot of people don't realize that some of these people have followings. So it's good for you to have a community behind you so that when you go out there, you know, Terrence like, guess what? I'm going to create my own uh, crypto current, my own currency, right? Or my own token, right? You have a following. People know that they're going to invest in that. If you say, guess what? I created my own NFT. You have people that you can, you know, promote to and they're going to come and bid on your, on your piece of artwork, on your NFT. So I think that's important for people to realize that, creating a brand or an image inside of the metaverse is really going to be critical. Um, they're taking this to the next level. Um, and so it's really about having that brand and that image if you want to be able to monetize inside of the metaverse um, because it's not going to be easy. For instance, going back to uh, NFTs, Nas, you know, probably people saw that Nas created his NFT and turned uh, some one of his, two of his songs into an NFT and you're able to get a piece of ownership in that. That would happen like a month ago. I missed out on it because it crashed the first the first week, yeah, but about that. <laughs> it was a nice experience. But Nas has a huge following. He has, you know, he's a legend. So it was easy for him to do that. That's not going to work for everyone. But um, you know, just kind of get your feet wet, get in there, investigate, and uh, test it out. 
I just instantly, instantly thought about when you say like about the long, long uh, passwords, passwords and whatnot. whatnot. I, remember I remember hearing a story about, about a gentleman who had, I think it was over a thousand dollars, a thousand Bitcoin, and he lost the password. And I know he was sick. I'm sick for him for real because he bought it at the very beginning. I think that he bought it maybe in like 2012, and I think it turned into maybe a hundred million dollars mm-hmm. worth of Bitcoin because you know back then it was early, and so he couldn't remember the password. He probably got like five attempts, and he was like on number four. I think he lost that money. Yeah, yeah it, it sucks. sucks. And, and I was, I was in school, school when Bitcoin, Bitcoin first, first started, started, and it was, it was like, like dirt, dirt cheap at the time. time. So, so that's what I'm saying. If I had a time machine, I'm going back to get in the game. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's all good. good. You, you live and learn. No, but it's good. But that's the good thing that uh, having this conversation right now because there's so yep, many yep. different currencies and it's still building. And so that's the message that we want to really convey. Don't turn away and say, oh, it's too late. It's still the early stages. It's the early adopters really in building right now. This mm-hmm. is the time where you're supposed to be researching and learning and figuring out where you can invest and what you can build because it's still cheap to invest in some of these things and some of the currencies that they need uh, to build some of these platforms. So there's other coins aside from Bitcoin that you can buy for like two dollars or even you know one penny that are going to blow up okay okay, okay. so make so sure make y'all get, get on that, that you know, you know just you gotta, gotta scare, scare money, money don't make, make money. money that's the that's main, main thing, thing out there, there you know you gotta, you gotta try. try all right, all right so, so we talked, we talked about, about the, the nft space, space. So, so what about advice for individuals who want to make their respective impact within the metaverse since that is very still new um well my advice Karen would be somebody needs to sit down, sit down in their environment and look at the world today and figure out what are some of the problems and issues that we face today. And then you create a solution to that problem in the metaverse. It is quite simple. There are so many loopholes, there's so many difficulties, there's so many stresses that we have today. And um, if you really just think about it and then you create a product, uh, I'm sorry, a product or an environment in the metaverse that eliminates that problem, then you will be quite successful in the metaverse. So again, um, people looked at the pandemic and said, okay, kids need to be able to learn. You know, what if we face with another tremendous, you know, virus that's going to keep people locked in their homes? Well, we need to be able to continue learning, right? Mm -hmm. We have to continue to connect with one another. Or um, the virtual field trips, as I said earlier, you know, kids need to be able to still go mentally someplace and still learn even though they're physically not there. So there may be something in your community that you know, a skill or a product that the whole world doesn't know. So take that what's in your community and put it in the metaverse, you know? and sell that product or create that that community there and you will thrive in the metaverse. Find that solution and take it to the virtual world. Definitely Definitely great great advice, advice, great great advice. advice. So So, we're we're wrapping wrapping up, up, but I always think think that that, um, in in order order to predict predict the future, future, you always have to look at where we came from. from. So So, when I think think about about technology, technology, um, we've, um, we've advanced, advanced so far, far and, and we're, we're in, in that, that generation, generation where we knew life, life without, without internet, internet and, now and now we know, we know life, life with nothing, nothing but internet, internet now. now. So, so what, what was, was your, your favorite technological advancement, advancement from the past? past. Before, Before y'all answer, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say mine, mine right? right? So, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a music I'm head. head. So, so once the MP3 players, players dropped, dropped, I was I like, was oh, it's a wrap, you know? You know? And, now, and now, you know, we have it on our phones, we have it on our iWatches, Apple Watches, all that stuff. So what is your, both of you, your favorite technological advancement from the past? I'm going to go first because you just stole my Karen. <laughs> I'm a music head too, and I think I'm like it's so much technology out of here. But uh-huh. like you said, we've seen it all, right? Like I remember the, the record players in the house going from tapes. I used to be, you know, stay up at night, like put tapes together, stretching Bobito, yeah. listening on the radio, you know, to the CDs. And then you know, once the digital music libraries came around and streaming, oh, boom! Like yeah. you know, so to be able to carry that music around and listen to whatever you want on demand. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so much music at our fingertips now that you don't even know what to listen to it so much, right? So for me, that that's my favorite. So I'm with you on that. So that yeah, you already. I don't know what yours is, but me and Taryn already. Uh, you two to one. 
Well, you know what? That's pretty hard to follow because I think you both chose a really good technology from the past that I still use today, obviously, and we all do. But I'm going to go with the telephone. Um, clearly, before the telephone, we had Morse codes and other forms of communication. But the telephone was revolutionary, Taryn. And the ability to use a telephone and connect and pick up a mm -hmm. phone and tell somebody, I love you. I care about you. How are you doing today? Is powerful. It is so powerful. And I feel it's one of the technologies that is not often used against us. Um, when I say against us, I mean like the internet, you know, and even as we talk about the metaverse, you know, there's a lot of cons to those. And there are cons to the telephone, but there's a lot of positivity. And the telephone really brought a lot of people together. So I think that technology, hands down for me, I'm a communicator, so I love to talk. I'm going with the telephone, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah now I feel you. And yeah, especially like when like them big, big brick phones, phones came out, out like, like I, yeah, yeah. it was wild out here, wild in the streets, for real. <laughs> but <laughs> it has it been a been pleasure. pleasure. Thank, Thank you both for dropping these jewels. This is crucial information, especially in this time frame. And when it comes to just, Just looking, looking at, at the, the way, way prices, prices are being gouged, gouged you know, we have, we have to evolve, evolve we, have we have to grow past, past what we've been doing, doing in the past and really, and really step, step into technology, technology you know. You know. Just because, Just because you may, may not, not know, know, that's, that's not, not a, an, excuse an excuse anymore. There's, There's internet, internet everywhere. everywhere. You, have you have folks like, like the Future Wise, Wise group that are here to educate. To educate. So, so let's, let's really get, get out there to make up for this, this financial, financial gap, gap that's, that's continuously, continuously growing year, year by year by year. year. So, so, you know, you it's know, time to really make a change. So Rawlin and Shay, it has been a pleasure to have you both here on the Miseducation of the People podcast. You know, y'all family, y'all welcome on the Real Talk session series anytime. So, so can you, you let the people know, know what you both, both have coming up, up um, and, and how, how they, they can, can connect with you? With you. All right. Well. well, we're working on a lot of things, like Shay said, um, you know, working closely with developers. Uh, but we do have a lot of presentations. If you guys want to catch us, you know, follow us on LinkedIn. I think we're really active there. LinkedIn has a large community of uh, people that are invested in the metaverse, the builders, the CEOs, the developers. So you can follow us there. That's where we do a lot of our communicating. Um, you know, we, we, we're coming up on the Black Business uh, Olympics that we're going to be doing next week. Uh, Shay has some stuff coming up that she's going to talk about. We have our show, Metaverseology, that you can catch on YouTube or any one of the places where you listen to, to your podcast. We also have a show for kids um, called um, Esports Metaverse and Beyond, you know, for a perspective for children, you know, that are looking to understand the impact and the future of jobs that are related to um, Esports in the metaverse, so it's not us on there. We have two young kids that are talking about it, so so they can relate to to that audience. So a lot of things in the pipeline, um, but what we really want to do is start to build more community. Like I said, we're we're in the space where there's a lot of people around the globe talking about the metaverse, but we need to see more Black people talking about the metaverse and also building a metaverse for us. We can't wait until someone else builds their own metaverse and invite us in with their own guidelines and their own rules. So that's one thing that we're gonna be working on uh, this year, really building that community out, building our own metaverse spaces. And we're looking for collaborators, right? People that are really looking to do something to make sure that our people are not left behind uh, and they understand the future of the metaverse and what the opportunities are and the capabilities for the future of our legacy. That's right. Um, Robin, you know, he really summed it up on basically our mission, our goals. Um, as I said, um, we have the Black Olympics we're involved in. I'm super excited. I'm going to be speaking at NFT Con in Atlanta in May. Uh, I am so excited about that. I'm going to I'm going to kill it on stage. So if you guys are out there, come out to the NFT Con in Atlanta. Um, as Robin said, we are in a space where not a lot of people look like us, and more people need to look like us. And we really want your viewers to understand, Taryn, that the metaverse is this theory right now, you know, very theoretical, but it's coming. And it's coming to the point that people will be forced in there, even if it's to pay your bills. People will be forced to interact in the metaverse. So don't wait until you are there spending your money in somebody else's community, as Robin said or you're buying products from other people when you could have been that creator and sold your products 
on this platform in the metaverse. So don't wait until it's too late. It's not too late. It's not just a theory. This is happening and you need to be part of this as every other community as we see is part of it. You know, too often Robin and I were at these conferences, we're talking to people and it's it's just really stressful when you just look and just there's not enough diversity. They say the metaverse is a chance for everybody. We need to take this moment and take advantage of that. I can't stress it enough. So look out for Shay and Robin. We're doing big things. We're working for all of us. If you guys want to connect with us, please connect with us. The MIQ is not going anywhere. It's growing and we're trying to make the metaverse, you know, equal and safe for all of us. So reach out to us. Yes, yes, yes. Please, 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 please reach out to Robin, Robin and Shay. Shay. They are out, out here dropping, dropping crucial, crucial knowledge, knowledge that we, that we all, all need, need to know. To know. So, so thank, thank you both, you both and, and thank you all for watching, watching the Miseducation of People. See you later. Bye. Miseducation of